For the most part, you do not really need to worry about the edges you've already paired up. They can just hang around. This time, I will pick the blue-white edge right here, and I found that its pair is up here. So I'm going to rotate that down so that they are on different sides of a center. But now look. I've got a paired center over here, and when I go to pair up the blue and white edges, this green and white edge gets separated. But you don't need to worry about that. You can just rotate up the blue and white edge, bring in random edges, bring it back down, and when you fix the centers, the edge piece will go back to normal. Now another thing that I think it's worth bringing up is that when you pair edges, it's alright to push back a set of paired edges bringing a new one up. Because when you go to bring down random edges, you just end up pulling that edge piece back up without harming anything. Now here's a case where I'm about to pair up the blue-yellow edges with this blue and yellow edge. And when I go to pair them up, I find that there are no random edge pieces on the top that I can replace with this one. If that happens, go ahead and check on the bottom layer. And here we go, there are three sets of random edges that I can use. So I can rotate one up, bring in random edges, and then bring that down and revert the centers back to normal. Now if you find this case where you're about to pair up edges, and in this case I'm using red-yellow, I look and there are no random edges on the top or even on the bottom. If that's the case, separate your edges and revert the centers back to normal. Keep track of the edges that you'll be pairing up here and look around on the middle layer. And then see there are two e random edges. And then I can rotate these around like this. So now a set of random edges is now on the top and on the bottom. So then I can connect them easily. Just like that. Now when you're pairing edges adjacent to each other, such as these green and red edges, and when you rotate it over here like this, and you find that there are no random edges on the top and on the bottom, but there is a random edge between the edges that you are going to be pairing up. So what you can do is rotate those up and replace it with a set of paired edges and bring that back down. Then you can pair up the edges, like this, and then go up and replace it with the random set of edges, and then revert the centers back to normal. When you get to the last two edges, and to know that, you can check around and find that there are no other random edges, you want to set them up so that the last two pair of edges are adjacent from each other, not opposite like before. When this happens, you can take the lower edge piece and then rotate it over here, like that. Or you can take this edge piece and rotate it over here. Or you can take that edge piece and rotate it over there. It doesn't really matter. So, so I am going to take this edge piece and rotate it over here. And then you are going to be using what I like to call the flipping algorithm. So what it does is it flips these edges. So after applying it, it looks like this, and then when I bring the centers back, they will become paired. And so that doesn't matter if you rotate the layer this way or whatever, just if you're moving a center piece over the opposite one, you just apply the flipping algorithm, bring the centers back, and they will be solved. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what the algorithm is. So taking this edge piece and putting it with this one, the algorithm is then R F I. U, R, I, F. And then you just bring the centers back to normal and they will become solved. Now if you find the last two sets of edges opposite from each other like this, then you just rotate one of them around like this so then they become adjacent. Then you can bring the edge piece over here like that, and then apply the flipping algorithm. And then revert the centers back to normal. Just like that. There, so now you have all of your centers and edge pieces done. So now you can go ahead and solve it just like a 3x3.
Now when you get to the step where you are making the yellow cross on the 3x3, you may notice this occur, which as you may know, never happens when solving the 3x3. So you may see this case, or you may see this case. Now to fix this, you apply an algorithm that is 15 moves long, and what it does is it flips this edge piece here so that yellow faces up. Now in doing this algorithm, when you see R in it, that means to grip these two layers again. And when you see L, you also grip these two layers. All of the other letters will just stand for the outside layer. Doing this makes the algorithm easier to memorize. So the algorithm is then 2R, 2B, 2U, L, 2U, RI, 2U, R, 2U, 2F, R, 2F, LI, 2B, 2R. And as you can see, it has flipped that edge so that yellow faces up. Now when you're putting the edges in the correct places, if you see this happen, where this edge needs to be switched with this one, there's a little shortcut that you can do. Before, you would have just had to apply that one algorithm twice to fix this. This algorithm is simpler to use, and it's worth bringing up now because I will be using it later. Now, in this algorithm, I will be using some new notation, but it's simple. Whenever you see a lowercase letter, like L, then you move the left middle layer 90 degrees clockwise, like this. And when you see a capital L with a lowercase L, that means you're supposed to grip both layers. Now this is the only algorithm where I'll be using this notation. I didn't use it in any of the other algorithms because it just makes things a little too complicated and I like to keep things as simple as possible. And what's really convenient about this algorithm is all the moves that you do are 180 degree turns. So then all of the moves in the algorithm will have a 2 in front of them. So the algorithm is then 2UU, 2LL, 2U, two 2 lowercase l, 2u, 2ll, 2uu, and it switches those edges nice and neatly. Now something that may help you to memorize this algorithm is if you look at the first three moves, they are really just the same as the last three moves, only reversed, and then in the middle there is that lowercase l move. Now onto the corner placement, and just like before, this step also has a parity problem. When you have this problem, you either have no corners in the correct places, or just two. And as you may know, two corners are never in the correct places on the Rubik's Cube. Now when you have no corners in the correct place on the 4x4, you don't know whether or not the parity has occurred. So just go ahead and do the algorithm that you would normally do. Nope, still the corners aren't in the correct places. Now this means that parity has occurred, but go ahead and do the algorithm again. And here we go, we now have two corners that are in the correct place. Now to fix the, just these two corners, you apply the same algorithm as before, the 15 move long one, except this time you will only grip the outer layers for R and L. So the algorithm again is 2R, 2B, 2U, L, 2U, RI, 2U, R, 2U, 2F, R, 2F, LI, 2B, 2R. And there we go, the corners are now in the correct places. But in doing this algorithm, it switches these two edges. So you're gonna have to do that other algorithm again. 2UU, 2LL, 2U, 2 lowercase l, 2U, 2LL, 2UU. And there we go, the edges are now in the correct places, and so are the corners. Now in this case, the corners are across from each other, and when that happens, you just apply that long algorithm to any side you want, and then you just 
switch the edges, and then you will have one corner in the correct place. And then you just do the normal algorithm to switch the three. And there we go, I now have all the corners in the correct places. Now all you have to do is orient your corners correctly and your 4x4 Rubik's Cube will become solved. So I hope you'll be able to solve your 4x4 now. Join me next time and we'll take on the next level.